there was a lot of misunderstanding about individual rights. I saw that it was important that we understood human rights and to see how they can be respected in Samoa. When there were discussions about setting up a national human rights institution in Samoa, we had to look at whether it should be a standalone organization or whether it should be part of an existing organization. And I think the time was perfect because we were also looking at updating the Ombudsman's legislation. We've had an Ombudsman's office here for a while. Small office, but an office that had gained the reputation of integrity and independence. Even before I was given this mandate, I was of the view that the conventional Ombudsman should also enlarge its purview to human rights. Ideally, a national human rights institution will be a body of the executive, but it will be at arm's length and independent from the executive as far as its reporting functions, as far as its advisory functions, and as far as its enforcement of human rights uh, functions are concerned. So the body has to have a degree of independence to be able to, uh, where necessary, advise, warn, and even criticize the government from time to time. You know, you have in your mind the concept but you still need proper studies, you still need to do proper consultations and write a proper report is not something that we just thought about and came up with like that. We scrapped the old Ombudsman Act and drew up a new one to incorporate the uh, conventional function of the Ombudsman, the good governance function, and also the office as an HRI for Samoa. And there was another part about a unit to investigate police officers and it just went right through. We didn't have any issues in the passing of the legislation. So those are the three functions we have now. But of course, we're more interested at this point on the human rights. There's no doubt that uh, one of the things that drives um, the success of an NHRI, especially when it's in its early stages of development and establishment, is the confidence that government and development partners have in those who provide the leadership, that they're independent, that there's no political agenda. So that's a key part of it, you know. You know, it's early stages yet, but it's worthwhile having a national human rights institution within Samoa. And I'm glad that our government supported it at the time and has continued to support it. It's a new field for us, a very interesting and exciting field, and uh, well, who wouldn't be excited about helping human beings to be better human beings? <laughs>